Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to the Walrus Audio Mako Series D1. Uh, presumably, this is the first in a franchise of Sharky pedals. This uh, Mako Series is a brand new pedal format from Walrus. Custom case with this really neat uh, kind of step design here, packed to the gills as a shark joke, with all kinds of modern features that people love to have these days. You've got MIDI ins and outs on the top here that I won't be using because I'm not a MIDI boy, I don't have MIDI controllers, but if you are a MIDI person, it's good to know it's there. Uh, you've got a tweak knob that controls modulation, tone, and age for all the different delay models. You've got digital, you've got modulated, you've got vintage, which is like analog sounds. You've got dual, which gives you some stereo options, and you've got reverse delay settings on here. Tap tempo settings, uh, you can hold down the bypass switch and ramp up into infinite repeats. Uh, you've got storage banks here. You can store up to nine different presets that you can access from the foot switches. Well, three at a time from the foot switches here. So you select your bank and then you press both of these at the same time to scroll through red, blue, and green LEDs, uh, allowing you to switch on the fly between different settings. Also, before we get into showing off the sounds of this thing, there's one feature I want to show off first because I think it is the heart and the soul, the unique selling proposition of this pedal. It is the attack knob. The attack knob is very interesting and very powerful. It shifts this from being a straight, you know, run of the mill sounding delay pedal with, you know, a bunch of cool features to something that really allows you to shape an ambient like soundscape if you want to. On the full left-hand side of the attack knob, it's just a normal delay. You play something and it repeats based on you know your other settings. But you roll that attack knob to the right and it starts applying a uh, like an envelope volume control to the part of your signal that's being fed into the delay path, which means that the attack on the front of the delay signal is softer and blends in and you get a much more like ethereal, like echo sort of sound. So I wanna start off showing off that feature. Here's my dry sound from my Jennings Navigator, classic T-style loadout here. I'm gonna be on the middle setting and also I'm running through a uh, DoD 250 style overdrive for just a little bit of uh, chimey dirt. All right, here is the Mako D1 on the digital delay setting. Pretty standard, normal delay sound. You hear each repeat start very clear. And abrupt the way you would expect from a delay, especially a digital delay. So let's turn up that attack a little bit. You can hear that harsh beginning or abrupt beginning to the signal has faded away. I'll go back to the normal. Not normal, but you know, normal for delay. Even on that low setting, it softens it up a bit. It gets more kind of like moody feeling. You turn it up a lot. Now you're like in echo territory. You turn it all the way up and you've really actually got to fight pretty hard to get some signal going in through the delay. On that really high setting, you could play with it pretty dynamically, uh, where you trigger, you know, a repeat that goes on for a long time. Let's let's turn up those repeats, and I'll show that off. So you use your playing dynamics to trigger 
you know, some sort of ambient thing that's going on behind you, and then you can play over it with lighter playing. There's a lot of fun options there. I'll be messing with this knob a lot as I go through the other settings, which I should get started on. Let's show this thing off. Uh, it has a range of 60 milliseconds, which is just blisteringly fast. <laughs> to 2,000 milliseconds. That was fun. People are gonna accuse me of uh, copying knob style now. <laughs> so let's leave it right in the middle-ish. Repeats knob obviously goes from one repeat to infinite, like any good delay pedal should. And like I said earlier, you can trigger infinite repeats just by holding down the bypass switch. Always a useful tool. Mix, you can go full wet. I mean, with a shark named pedal, of course you can go full wet. And all the way dry. But why? Why would you do that? What's wrong with you? Okay, let's get into the tweak knob now. This is really fun stuff. They've given you a full suite of controls to affect the signal of each different model with just one knob and one switch, which I think is pretty brilliant. It saves a lot of space and gives you a lot to play with. Uh, we're on the mod setting right now. As you can see, I've got it turned all the way down. <laughs> On the digital delay setting, it controls a pitch modulation. just a little bit of subtle modulation. Then you've got a tone control when you flick to the middle position. That sort of thing is just infinitely usable. Be able to control the tone of your delay signal to give you more like ambient tones if you want, or go full bright like this. right in the middle. Now the age control. On the digital delay, age controls the intensity of a bit crusher applied to the repeats. Brace yourself, says the manual. <laughs> so this is really fun. This is a bit crusher. Ooh, you can hear it already. Just dump it all the way down. A 
was fun. I'm gonna leave it turned down pretty far though. Just a little bit of crisp on there. Then of course you've got your preset uh, selector there and your tap tempo. Different subdivisions available for tap tempo. I mean, you already know all that stuff. I don't need to explain tap tempo to you. Let's get into the different uh, delay settings here. We've been on digital. Let's go to mod. From the manual, because this is going to say it better than I am, the mod delay program has unique modulation LFOs applied to the repeats that are random and run at multiple rates to create unpredictable pitch modulation. This results in very unique sounding repeats, perfect for warping minds and scattering trains of thought. There's some big promises there. Let's check out, let's uh, turn down the age and the tone, we'll put tone in the middle and then check out the range of the mod control on this. Especially on, you know, a setting uh, left of noon or midnight. I like that. Check out the range of the tone control. This actually has a low pass envelope filter on the tone control, so it changes the tone with your playing dynamics. Next up is the age control. Age, uh, add some overdrive. Nice and crispy there. Let's get weird and dime everything. Next up, the vintage delay. Take everything back down here. Well, tone in the middle. Pretty 
pretty decent analog delay sort of sound. Let's turn up the modulation, see what happens. The manual says this is an asymmetric pitch modulation. I mean, this is a modulation, that's for sure. Next, the tone. Plenty murky for people who want that sort of like uh, carbon copy sort of sound. It's really nice and bright too. Yeah, super bright. I like that. I have a feeling I'm going to use that setting a lot. <laughs> okay, so next up is the age control. Uh, this is another overdrive. to being pretty bright. I have a feeling this vintage setting is going to be kind of my go-to with the uh, the D1. Dime the mod, dime the tone, dime the age. Start with a bad note. <laughs> No spaceship noises in this pedal, but it does some fun glitchy stuff when you rack the time knob. All right, on to the dual setting. This is the one where if you're plugged in to two outputs, you can do some stereo stuff. Let's make sure we turn all this stuff off. Just start out. Put on your stereo. Because this is it. It is bouncing back and forth around me right now. Oh, that's always fun. just fills the space in such a magical way. Ooh, I 
I like that. Let's, uh, let's dime the mod control. What does that do on the dual? Adjust pitch modulation to the repeats when turned up. Easy peasy. <laughs> Control, low pass filter. Also, there's different, really unique stereo settings across the uh, tap tempo switch here. It's like different stereo patterns. Ooh, man, that one made me a little dizzy. Ah, that's a bunch of fun. I like that. Okay, on to the reverse setting now. Did I do the age on that? Adds gentle warm overdrive and high frequency roll off to the repeats when turned up. All right. We're here, we might as well do it. Okay, on to reverse now. The fun thing about the reverse on the D1 is that when you add in that attack control, it goes from being your normal kind of freaked out reverse tape sorts of sounds to being something um for lack of a better term more usable in like an ambient sort of way it takes off that sharp attack off the back end of the reverse delay and just makes it something different It's kind of just more subtle and more musical and less weird sounding, but weird in a different way.
bad notes there. Let's turn down the attack and explore the reverse as just a simple reverse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll check out the range of the tweak stuff now. Start with the mod. Pitch modulation. Spooky and weird. Now the tone control, low pass filter again. Let's turn up that attack. And now the age control. Does that do anything different on here? Adds gentle warm overdrive and high frequency roll off. So that's been the Mako Series D1 by Walrus Audio. I think it's a bunch of fun. Uh, it's just full of really beautiful sounds. It doesn't get, you know, too weird or silly or anything like that. It's for people looking to make some really compelling kind of like ambient sounds, traditional delay sounds, uh, and everything in between. It's, it's just Packed to the gills with features. There's that shark joke again. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me a rude, nasty comment, support us on Patreon. You know the whole drill. Buy shirts down below. I don't know. Follow the links. Stay grounded. Bye, everybody.